So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Now, this next video, right, is people who literally got served what they requested. Now, you know what that makes me think of? The movie Good Burger. Remember he ordered the burger with nothing on it and he just gave him the bun? <laughs> That's literally what this, this title made me think of. But we're going to get into the video, man. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Join the family. And let's check this out. We all love pizza. In fact, according to a 2019 survey, it's the world's most popular dish. And for good reason. However, great pizza is the sum of its parts, and one's choice of topping can be make or break. And for anyone who suffers from eleophobia, the fear of olives, you might want to look away. When a customer requests When it comes to pizza, I keep it simple. Pepperoni or meat lovers. That's it. That's all that's that's my comfort zone. Tested in their own words, a very generous amount of olives. One cook decided to put his olives where his mouth was and served up this. Unbelievably, no. the customer was said to be very pleased. Eh, but if you ask me, this olive overload is truly a nightmare. And I'm afraid the nightmare only continues. Another olive fiend stopped by a pizza truck and was asked whether he wanted, quote, a little olives or a lot of olives, to which he evidently chose the latter, judging by this photo. What? God forbid that was actually the smaller serving, meaning the larger one might have looked something like this. Of all the pizza toppings, Pepperoni certainly reigns supreme. Now, if you want to overload my pizza with pepperoni, I'm, I, I, so I guess I can't judge nobody else because I would take pepperoni like that. You know what I mean? I love pepperoni, so I would, I would be cool with that. But I don't want it so full that when you try to pick it up, it's all falling off. No. And don't take it from me. Ask the 64% of Americans who prefer its sumptuous, smoky flavor to any other topping. But as the saying goes, too much of a good thing can become bad. That sentiment was seemingly lost on one guy who didn't just request extra pepperoni, as he so eloquently put it, an ungodly amount of pepperoni. And well, that's <laughs> certainly what he got when he received this cholesterol-popping pizza. Bro. It's pretty ungodly to me. On that note, if you are in the market for something to clog your arteries, then Grant's Pizza House in Michigan has you covered. Behold the Dragon Scale Pizza. This beast is so tightly packed with pepperoni that they have to be neatly stacked into a scaly pattern, which you can imagine is quite the grease feast. Interestingly, according to one... Now for me, I've overdone it with cheese. Like, when you go somewhere, you'd be like, extra cheese, or back when you were younger, you might have said extra, extra cheese, and then I had to learn to scale it back from that, because that was way too much. You know what I mean? Yeah, I might have overdone it with that, but pepperoni, though? On Redditor, this fierce menu item was the result of many customers regularly requesting as much pepperoni as possible. Well, they asked, and Grant's Pizza House certainly listened. Better yet, popular pizza chain Little Caesars have even got in on the salami surge with what they call the Old World Fanceroni Pepperoni Pizza, featuring at least 100 pepperonis toppled on top of one another. 100. They'd be wise to sell this pizza with a side of health insurance and a waiver, if you ask me. Reckon you could defeat any of those pizzas? Hey, let me know down below. While it's hard to believe not everyone wants their pizza topped with a meat-sweat-inducing heap of pepperonis, <laughs> this next guy simply wanted a half-pepperoni, half-cheese pizza. However, what he actually asked for was a pepperoni pizza that's half-cheese, which admittedly is quite an ambiguous way to put it. The result was, much to his surprise, literally what he asked for. A pepperoni pizza with cheese only on one half. If you listen carefully, you'll hear the cries. Hey, yes, that would make me so mad. That would <laughs> make me so not mad enough to send it back, bro. Uh, I'm not one of those people that send his food back. You know what I mean? And that's a conversation, a long conversation for another day. 
But yeah, I would be mad at that. I, I just wouldn't go back there. ...of cheese fiends far and wide. After all, a 2017 study found that the average American consumes 37 pounds of cheese a year. That's wow. roughly the weight of around 12 chihuahuas. In fact, one cheesy fella had such a hankering for the stuff that he requested six times the usual amount of cheese on his burger. The result, however, was Bro. much less a cheese dream than it was a gross mound of slop that melted in the heat Bro. of its container. A word of advice. Yo, you eat that, your body is going to be so mad with you, bro. Your body is going to be pissed. If the cheese doesn't fit on the burger, then I think it's a sign that you may have gone a little overboard. That said, it seems there's a market for these hot, cheesy messes. And they call them volcano burgers. Oh. The idea being that you simply drench the entire thing in melted cheese. And why stop there? You might as well go ahead and lather yourself in it while you're at it. Of all the cheesy messes out there, though, history was truly made back in 2012 when a Japanese news outlet, Sora News 24, ordered what might be considered one of the cheesiest burgers ever. This gluttonous challenge saw one of their employees order a Burger King burger with 1,000 slices of cheese. Yep, you heard that right. 1,000 slices. And the wow. result was an impressive stack of cheese, sandwiched between two hilariously normal buns. The reporter ultimately failed in slaying this cheesy beast, presumably realizing that eating this much cheese before bed would give you nightmares for life. But nevertheless, the Burger King staff absolutely lived up to the task. It kind of makes me feel better about my personal cheese consumption. Now, this video started out making me hungry. I ain't even gonna lie. When I saw the pizzas and stuff, I was getting hungry. Now they just took it somewhere else. They, <laughs> they're getting ridiculous at this point, bro. Why would people order something like that? Y'all just don't like your body. You know what I mean? I ain't the best eater. Don't get me wrong. I'm not the best eater. I love my wings and burgers and stuff like that, too. But this is just glutton for punishment. Understandably, not everyone is keen on having their burger loaded with stomach-curdling amount of cheese. So much so, this next person requested their cheese come on the side. An instruction which seemingly sent one chef's circuit board spinning as he plated up this. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's pretty much what he asked for. I Just mean... a little more literal than I think anyone was expecting. Oftentimes, condiments can make all the difference for food. God knows, I just couldn't enjoy a banana the same way without ketchup. Now that said, sometimes less is more. My lesson this next Redditor learned the hard way. And while I'd like to tell you that he innocently requested just a little extra garlic sauce, the truth was he brazenly demanded, quote, as much garlic sauce as humanly possible. And, well, for better or worse, that's just what he got. A tray of food grossly drowned what? in garlic sauce. Uh, retrospectively, the guy regretted his hubris, most likely because he never expected this hyperbolic, garlicky demand to be met. Yo, I don't care. Y'all watching this, y'all orders are, the, are gonna be so, like, precise and concise when y'all make y'all orders this week <laughs> after seeing this stuff oh man because i'm normally one i'd be like yo extra soy sauce when i get my chinese food extra packets of soy sauce but they'd be skimping you know what i mean and then when you think about certain places you order from that may be skimpy on like like just say the other night i got a sub and i get the oil and vinegar and sometimes when i'm in the shop i'll be like all right heavy on the oil and vinegar you know what i mean because they'd be skimpy with it but if i get my sandwich and i squeeze it and it's pouring oil and vinegar i'm gonna be mad <laughs> but like you said gotta be careful what you ask for and i'm sure anyone within smelling distance of his ensuing garlic breath were likewise struck with a particularly pungent sense of regret However, it seems ordering extra sauce can be a bit of a risk in general, True. as one guy found out when he asked for extra mayo at McDonald's. What he anticipated to be a slightly more generous serving 
turned out to be a supremely sloppy burger oozing with mayonnaise. And contrary to the McDonald's slogan, he was not loving it. Another customer who certainly wasn't loving it either was YouTuber Ted Nivison, when he ordered extra Big Mac sauce for his burger. Foolish to assume that it would come actually on his burger, Ted was bemused to find his extra sauce had come in a separate box. Less than ideal. If you have to put the Mickey D's burger together yourself, you'd at least want to be paid an hourly rate, right? Now, there are two types of McDonald's customers in the world. Those who want nothing to do with pickles, and those who want, well, something like this. Well, this next guy was the first type, and explains to the cashier how he only wanted ketchup on his cheeseburger. By which he meant no pickles, onions, or mustard. Evidently not having fully comprehended what exactly that meant, the staff whipped up what <laughs> might only be described as a ketchup sandwich. That joke right there watched Good Burger. He watched Good Burger. I guess he could have been a bit more specific, but given that he said he only wanted ketchup, the fact they still included a bun makes the whole miscommunication a bit of a head-scratcher. Though of all the miscondimentations, oh. This next one is arguably the grossest. Oh. After visiting a subway drive through just moments before it closed, one person, seeking a little extra mayo, was hastily served this monstrosity. Yikes. Bro. It almost looks like they just gave them all the mayo that they were about to throw out. Like, that's a disgruntled employee. He did that. That employee was wanting to be fired on his way out. Something wasn't right. They didn't pay him his check or something. Like, extra mayo is not supposed to look like that. And I don't even eat mayo, bro. That's, <laughs> that is not supposed to look like that. I, yeah, yeah. What, what are y'all doing? You going back? You requesting another sandwich? You know what I mean? Some way you could do that because you could watch them make it. Any other place, I'm not sending my joint back. I'm going to just deal with either the higher ups, you contact the company or something like that. You know what I mean? But Subway maybe because you could watch them make your food, but that had to come from a disgruntled employee. Although admittedly, with all that free extra mayo, the value yes. for money is undeniably second to none. Now speaking of wanting to get your money's worth, picture this. You grab a coffee to go from your favorite caffeination station, but as you pick up your cup, it feels a little light. You pop the hood and find that your grande is looking more like a tall. First world problems, am I right? Well, one guy was so tired of this happening that he specifically asked for his coffee to be filled up to the top with no room. Clearly, this request wasn't well received by some presumably disgruntled barista who presented him with a coffee that was so full it was physically impossible for him to pick it up without spilling. Ooh. That is precisely what he asked for though, right? I guess there's just no pleasing some people. A McDonald's employee had a similarly scornful approach when they went comically over the top in fulfilling a customer's request for extra lettuce. Apparently the entire box being stuffed with lettuce, like some kind of fragile parcel, wasn't what the customer had in mind. The question on my mind, though, is what kind of psychopath orders extra lettuce? Now we're still, up next we have another person who clearly took no consideration for the stench of their own breath, being insistent on having plenty of extra onion. So the sandwich maker willingly exceeded all expectations when he filled the sandwich with a bucket oh. load of onions. Sick of people invading your personal space? Just eat this sandwich, and they'll be sure to keep a good distance. Hey, you know another reason people do stuff like this, right? Sometimes it's not you. Sometimes it was the customer that came before you that kind of ticked off the employee. <laughs> so the next person catches it. That's what it'd be a lot of times, too. You know what I mean? Where are my people that work in fast food? What would make you go off like this? Put it in the comment section. A generous serving, however, can sometimes be nice. And one guy was certainly delighted when he tucked into his takeout and found that his rice container was 100% full. So much wow. so, the rice had even molded into the shape of the container. Now that's value for money. Now similarly, one woman visited a Starbucks 
and ever so politely asked for, quote, a ton of caramel sauce, if you'll pardon my French. Astonishingly, the barista fully understood the assignment and whipped up a caramel-flooded frappuccino. Is anyone else's mouth suddenly watering? And the generosity continues. One meat lover asked for some extra beef on his sandwich, to which he was seemingly given the whole cow. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, by comparison, some places can be pretty stingy. One hungry Wendy's customer was keen for some of their famous chili, mm -hmm. but requested a little extra onion. The expectation, I could imagine, was some finely chopped onions integrated into the chili. It, regrettably, though, the reality was this. A few <laughs> sad and rather cumbersome onion rings bobbing along the chili. Oh More proof gosh. that nothing good has ever come of ordering extra onion. If you having a bad day, that right there will send you over the top, I'm telling you. <laughs> that sends you over the top. You may have to pull over on the side of the road, get out and just scream to the top of your lungs, man, and get yourself back on track. Likewise, one person was suitably what? disappointed when they realized they bought a literal chocolate chip muffin. Emphasis on the chip. Yep, the muffin contained just one sad and single chocolate <laughs> chip. In many ways, I too am like that chocolate chip. Sad, single, and ready to mingle. Ladies. Now feel free to show me some love down in the comments, and even subscribe, I promise. I'll shower you with ludicrously overfilled containers of food, or at least great content. No, keeping it sweet. These days, there's cake for just about any occasion. Happy birthday, congratulations, sorry I ran over your cat and put sunglasses on it so you'd think it was still alive. <clears throat> uh, point is, cakes are great for all occasions. But if we've learned anything so far, it's to be very careful what you ask for. Case in point, when one UK mom was ordering a cake for her daughter's 21st birthday, a fatal typo left her with a very different cake. She intended to ask for a blonde girl to be sat on top of the cake, but some sloppy thumb work meant she actually typed out blind instead. I think you can see where this is going. Oh! Hilariously, the cake maker followed the instruction to a T and presented a cake topped with a white cane-wielding girl. Worst of all, she was a brunette. I guess the irony in all of this is that the mom could have probably done with a stronger pair of glasses herself. Check your spelling, people! Now that, of course, was a genuine misunderstanding. Yeah. Though this next cake catastrophe can only be attributed to utter incompetence. One customer simply wanted their cake to say, Thanks for a great year, in the color purple. Simple. Sounds straightforward enough, right? Well, not for this brainless baker, who literally wrote, Thanks for a great year in purple. Worst of all, they wrote it in blue, and not very neatly either. Uh, let's just hope it tasted good. And would you believe it, this has happened more than once. Another unsuspecting customer who was ordering two cupcake boxes asked the baker to write happy birthday on both. Lo and behold, this Einstein baker wrote happy birthday on both on both cupcake boxes. What were they thinking? That the birthday curl was called on both? The extent of some people's stupidity truly is cons- This wouldn't make me as mad or some of the other things on the list. This would have me just laughing hysterically. Because <laughs> all it is is a miscommunication. But it's hilarious though, nonetheless. Turning. Uh, moving on, when we think of sponge cake, our mind might conjure up images of light and fluffy cake. However, when one guy's girlfriend asked him to make her a sponge cake, he thought it would be a hilarious opportunity to take her request extremely literally. That was, he whipped up a stack of chocolate-frosted kitchen sponges. Shamefully, I think I would still probably lick the chocolate off. Children are innately creative creatures, mainly thanks to their underdeveloped frontal cortex, which leads to more rational, less divergent thinking as it grows with age. Add in the fact that they're constantly playing, moving, and learning about the world, and you've got the perfect recipe for creative thinking. 
However, with that comes pretty unique problem solving, ranging from being hilarious to surprisingly genius. This first little boy was working on some homework which asked him to rank the words in alphabetical order. The expectation, for example, was to write Apple as number one, then Fox, and so on and so forth. But this little Einstein had quite the different understanding, as he rejigged each individual word into alphabetical <laughs> order, essentially creating anagrams. Hey, hey, that's on the instructor there. That's on the instructor. Give that joker there an A. Give him an A. <laughs> Read it, write the following words in alphabetical order. They come in the alphabet. I'm saying, the kid might low-key be a little genius. Nevertheless, the homework did ask for the words to be put in alphabetical order, which he Same. can't say he didn't do. And likewise, but to a slightly less intelligent degree, this next uh. kid was asked to show his thinking, which was implied to mean his calculations. Amusingly, he misinterpreted this in the most literal sense, as he drew a picture of himself thinking of the answer. <laughs> and not a very flattering one at that. Though you have to admire his innocence, right? <laughs> and it seems children's homework is an endless source of comedy, as this next uh -huh. little wisecracker had the funniest <laughs> approach to being asked to name some quadrilateral shapes. But we can all hopefully agree that this is called a square, and this is a rectangle. Mm -hmm. However, one little girl decided to give them more interesting, albeit less, mathematical names, such as Bob and Kate. My favorite part is that Pedison and Harry, both rectangles, are apparently different enough to deserve individual names. Bob, Cade, and the rest of the gang might not be the most intelligible answer, but this next kid was so <laughs> clever that he even outsmarted the teacher. This student was asked to imagine that he were a Chinese immigrant in the year 1870 and to describe his experience. Evidently being fluent in Mandarin, he decided to pull out this secret weapon and write it well and truly from the perspective of a Chinese immigrant in traditional Chinese lettering. Wuhan Peifu. Now, homework aside, studies suggest that having a pet is great for children. Not only does it teach them about empathy and companionship, but responsibility too. However, let this be a warning that they shouldn't be given too much responsibility, as one mom found out when she asked her toddler to feed the cat. Rather than a serving of good old cat kibble, this tot trade up something a little more refreshing and richer in vitamin C, an orange. And as you can see by the cat's face, he isn't too happy about his new diet. But I guess this is what happens when you get a toddler to do your chores for you. If you need more proof that giving toddlers tasks to do is never a good idea, then check this next one out. One mom was trying to teach her three-year-old son that used tissue goes down the toilet. What she actually said, though, was, when you use the tissue, throw it in the toilet. To which this three-year-old oh, evil- I knew that was coming. Oh, I knew that was coming. That right there, another reason to send you over the top. <laughs> but you can't be mad. You can't be mad. The kid actually listened. And you know how hard if you have kids to get them to actually listen? You just got to build upon this. That's all. Simple fix. <laughs> Genius misinterpreted to mean the whole roll. I mean, if you're concerned about splashback, then uh. that ought to do it. As we've seen... Being a parent can be challenging, True. and oftentimes getting children to eat their food can be pretty difficult. True. I mean, somehow my mom still manages to trick me with the whole airplane thing. True. Point is, kids and food can be difficult. Case in point, when one mom was compromising with her son to eat half a banana, she didn't expect him to take this bizarre approach. I mean... I don't want to say your kid is a psychopath, but uh, similarly, another kid had pretty much the same idea when asked to eat half their grapes. Quite honestly, this one just feels like more of an assertion of dominance. That said, this next one has to be the most screwed. Now, I ain't gonna say it at the same time now. If your kid just eats half of a banana like you told him or half the grapes, 
when you lay down as a parent at night, make sure your doors are locked. <laughs> that's, a, that's the warning I'm gonna give you. Make sure your doors are locked. Screwed up. One mom told her five-year-old son that he could watch TV so long as he ate half of his hot dog. Upholding his end of the bargain, he ate half the hot dog, but in quite possibly the most unnerving way I've ever seen. It almost feels the same as burning an American flag. We all make impulsive purchases from time to time, and subsequently regret them. They call it buyer's remorse. However, coming up are some people who had buyer's remorse after receiving the most painfully literal versions of their purchases. For example, take this first guy who was planning to impress his wife with a color-changing mug from Amazon. Right, because that's what a lady wants. However, what he expected to be a nighttime to daytime Christmas scene turned out to be exactly as it was advertised. As in, the mug literally had a print of the advertisement on it. But I suppose that's what you get for buying your wife a mug for Christmas. In a similar circumstance, one mom was intending to buy her son this cute dinosaur-shaped pillow. Little did she know that it would just be an ordinary pillowcase with a print of the Amazon listing on it. Child included. Speaking of putting the children to bed, wow. if you cast your mind back to 2011, you'll recall this classic piece of not-safe-for-children housewife literature Fifty Shades of Grey was sweeping the world. Well, when one was Great times, wasn't it, fellas? Great times, bro, that whole wave there. A anyway, back, back to the video. Woman wanted to get her hands on the X-rated read. She turned to eBay. Though I personally wouldn't recommend buying a second-hand copy of this particular book. Either way, to her surprise, what she received wasn't the erotic escapades of Mr. Christian Grey, but literally Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh. A real page-turner, huh? But I guess that's what you get for attempting to read that kind of smut. Shame on you. Oh. On the topic of regrettable purchases, it's said that at least one in five Americans have left the hair salon regretting their new do. And we've all been there trying to hold yep. back the tears and force a smile as you assure the hairdresser that you love it, while bargain basement Kim Jong-un stares back at you in the mirror. Well, one guy had the mother of all terrible haircuts when he showed his barber a reference picture. A reference picture which they took very literally when he replicated it exactly, oh. head and all. Now, there isn't much info around this image, so I'm going to hope and pray. <coughs> Again, clearly, miscommunication. That's still a good barber, though. <laughs> I have to say, the fact that he was able to replicate that guy's face like that on the back of your head, he's very talented. You know what I mean? You just got to let him know. No, you want <laughs> the look, not the person. <laughs> pray that it was a consensual joke and not a serious what attempt. The Either way, there's no denying the barber's skill. Yeah. While in the previous few cases, the customer fell victim to deception and wild misunderstandings, that isn't to say that the customer is always right. Case in point, one online shopper ordered a pretty large item to which they oddly requested the delivery driver leave under the doormat. I'm not quite sure what they were attempting to achieve, but the driver did exactly as they asked, resulting in this futile, <laughs> albeit amusing, image. Aha! Those pesky thieves will never find it now. Photoshop is a wonderful tool. Just ask the Kardashians. It makes anything possible. Want to stand on top of the Eiffel Tower? Done. Go surfing with Oprah? You got it. But with great power comes great responsibility. And one photoshopper, James Friedman, has been using his abilities to get up to mischief. One of his victims sent in a picture of she and her friend. Well, friend is a strong word. For what she actually wanted was for James to photoshop the other girl to look bad and to make her look great, as they were both competing for the same boy's attention. Her fatal error, however, was that she misspelt great as 
G-R-A-T-E, as in Great the Cheese. Obviously, James, a serial prankster, seized the opportunity and created this hilarious Photoshop. She looks pretty great, if you ask me. But hey, that's karma for you. I mean, whatever happened to sister- And all sales are fine on plus. I got the proof that you said great, G-R-A-T-E. I mean, what more can I say? You asked for it. Before misters. On the flip side, Spell another check. two gal pals got in touch with James to fix their extreme height difference. But since they didn't give James much instruction, besides asking him to make them the same height, he decided to take some, shall we say, creative liberties. Is this what they meant? What the- I mean, I don't see the problem. My arms come out of my head too. Now, this next one is one of my personal favorites. What the this happy couple managed to snap a cute photo together, but on looking at the pic, there was just one thing bothering them. The woman in the red dress in the background. Seeking help from James, the fairy god photoshopper, they didn't technically ask him to get rid of her, but rather do something with her. Which James certainly did. You can imagine how shocked they were when they found themselves snuggling up to this random woman. I mean, they all look so happy together. Certainly one for the photo album. One which won't be making the photo album, however, is this girl's senior photo. She had taken quite a dramatic one while lying in water, yet it wasn't quite dramatic enough for her, so she asked James to make it appear as if she were more underwater. At this point, you're probably wise to James's work, so he's obviously going to put her in the sea, or in an aquarium or something, right? Nope. He decided to take this girl for a spin and place her in a washing machine. I mean, she's definitely looking a lot more underwater, although she might- Yo, remind me to never request this, this James person to ever do something for me. Need a hanging out to dry. And that- Oh my gosh, bro. I don't think I've cried laughing so much at a video in a long time. <laughs> bro, listen, man, y'all, I'm pretty sure y'all have some different experiences that you went through as well. Put them in the comment section, all right, so we can read them and continue the laughter, you know what I mean? But if you don't want us to laugh, don't put it in there. If, you, if you're sensitive or anything like that, don't put it in there. We just want to have some fun, man, brighten some people's days, all right? Y'all get at me in the comment section. Stick around and stay tuned. Until next one, I'm gone. Peace.